Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. How many exercises per muscle group are required for optimizing muscle hypertrophy? Might one exercise be sufficient? Let's analyze the scientific literature. A 2016 study from Brazil recruited 26 previously untrained men. One group trained the squat only, a second group the leg press only, and a third group both the leg press and squats. After training twice a week for 10 weeks, fat-free mass gains non-significantly differed between the three groups. The raw percentages seemingly favor the squat group. Taken at face value, this study may imply multiple exercises for a muscle fails to benefit muscle hypertrophy. Yet, a crucial limitation of this study is fat-free mass is an indirect and imprecise muscle hypertrophy measurement. It does not allow us to know if growth across muscle heads or even regions of each muscle differed between groups. This matters as regional hypertrophy exists. Growth across muscle heads and even within regions of a muscle head isn't always equal. For example, a 2013 Japanese study found leg extensions didn't equally grow the quad heads or the upper and lower regions of each head. Another 2021 Japanese study found preacher curls with a partial range of motion at long lengths did not equally grow three regions across the biceps. Different exercises for a muscle group may produce diverse regional growth, meaning multiple exercises for a muscle are complementary to maximally develop it regionally. Yet, I would say the Brazilian study shows how one exercise per muscle is far from useless for hypertrophy. A 2021 Brazilian study elegantly shows how multiple exercises for a muscle benefit regional development. 22 detrained men were assigned into a non-varied or varied group. Both groups trained three times per week. The non-varied group performed the same exercises in each session, whereas the varied group performed three different exercises per muscle across the three weekly training sessions. Each exercise was trained with these variables. Before and after eight training weeks, Rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, elbow flexor, and triceps growth were measured at the upper, middle, and lower regions. Growth at some regions was similar between both groups, but growth at other regions was superior for the varied group. This was despite the fact lean mass gains were similar between both groups, demonstrating how lean mass and fat-free mass measures failed to detect subtle hypertrophy differences. Another 2014 Brazilian study further indicates the beneficial impact of multiple exercises. Some subjects train the squat only across 12 weeks. Other subjects train the squat, leg press, lunge, and deadlift across 12 weeks. The squat was performed to 90 degrees of knee flexion on a Smith machine. This might seem like a crime, but we've examined previously how machines are not inherently inferior to free weights for hypertrophy, and one Japanese study found similar quad hypertrophy between 90 and 140 degree knee flexion squats. Returning to the study, both groups increased the size of their quadriceps muscles, but those performing multiple exercises tended to see greater vastus medialis and lateralis growth. So multiple exercises per muscle can benefit regional growth, but I still want to again emphasize it's not like one exercise per muscle is useless. In both studies, one exercise for a muscle still induced very significant hypertrophy. In the Costa study, the variety group used three biomechanically different exercises in the same week. Interestingly, the researchers speculated the significantly greater upper elbow flexor hypertrophy seen by the varied group may be a result of them training inclined curls. The Fonseca study had subjects vary their exercises across different weeks suggesting this might also be a viable way to train a muscle with multiple different exercises. Also, these exercises were biomechanically contrasting. This is an important point. Random exercise variation with little biomechanical rationale probably produces a redundant or suboptimal stimulus. A 2019 Spanish study demonstrates this. 19 trained men were assigned to a fixed or variation group. Both groups trained two upper and lower training sessions per week for eight weeks. The fixed group performed the same six upper and six lower body exercises in their sessions. The variation group used a phone app consisting of 80 different exercises to randomly generate what exercises they trained each session. Each exercise was trained with these variables. Before and after the study, rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, and vastus lateralis thickness were measured at around the 50% thigh bone length. The data suggest the variation group experienced lower rectus femoris growth. Why? 
The leg extension is an exercise that develops the rectus femoris highly, and the fixed group regularly train this exercise. But the variation group, due to the app randomly selecting exercises, would have likely trained this exercise at a much lower frequency. So random rotation and fluctuation of exercises isn't necessarily beneficial for regional growth. Though I do want to emphasize how random exercise variation wasn't tragic for muscle hypertrophy, it still built muscle well in these trained individuals. Some individuals may genuinely enjoy random exercise variation, although a practical limitation of this is tracking progressive overload cannot be easily done here. I rarely accept sponsors at the House of Hypertrophy, as I don't know or trust many companies reaching out, but I've been in contact with Alpha Progression, a truly unique and advanced fitness app. You can add your own program or use their custom workout generator that produces excellent programs. You can periodize reps and reserves and sets, and schedule deload weeks. The custom workouts can still be edited to your liking, workouts can be tracked live, and the app generates solid progression recommendations across sessions. It has a clean design with a database of more than 450 exercises with great text and video tutorials. Aesthetic graphs can track virtually any measure across time, like bench press strength, number of workouts a week, body weight, and even set numbers per muscle group and circumference measures of body regions. The link in the comments and description takes you to the app, and by using this link you'll have two weeks free of all its features, plus 20% off a yearly or monthly subscription. If you do purchase the app, House of Hypertrophy will get 50%, so this sincerely helps support these free videos. Thank you. A 2020 Brazilian study by Chavez might be considered an anomaly. Subjects either train the inclined bench press only, flat bench press only, or a combination of both with these variables. After training once a week for 8 weeks, pectoralis major growth across three regions tended to be superior for the inclined bench press group only. So performing biomechanically different chest exercises didn't enhance regional growth. Rather, this data indicates an inclined bench press is solely superior for overall chest development. It's unclear if these results apply to free weight since a Smith machine was used. But there are limitations and considerations of this study. Training frequency and volumes were low in this study. The combination group only performed between 2-3 to three sets per exercise in a week, and maybe higher training volumes changed the outcome. I'm also skeptical of the study's data. The incline group saw a 0.8 to 1 cm increase in thickness, equating to around a 54-62% to 62 increase, which is abnormally massive, especially when considering the fact lower frequencies and weekly volumes were used. Compare this to a 2013 Japanese study, which had subjects train the barbell bench press with these variables for 6 months, using higher volumes and frequencies versus the Chavez study. Yet hypertrophy was merely comparable to that observed in the Chavez study. Thus, I'm hesitant to put my faith in the findings of the Chavez study. One exercise per muscle can certainly be excellent for muscle hypertrophy, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if you want to do this. As further evidence, a Japanese study compared seated to lying leg curls and observed greater hamstrings hypertrophy with seated leg curls, so simply training seated leg curls should be awesome for hamstrings development. The same researchers compared overhead extensions to pushdowns and observed greater triceps hypertrophy with overhead extensions, so simply training overhead extensions should be awesome for triceps gains. But to truly optimize regional development across a muscle, a few biomechanically different exercises is likely needed. We just saw overhead extensions produced overall more triceps growth than pushdowns, but regional growth differences between different triceps exercises likely exist, making them complementary. Some data indicates dumbbell skull crushes may tend to grow the triceps at the middle regions, whereas potentially dumbbell overhead extensions develop the upper region slightly more. Coming soon to the House of Hypertrophy, we'll be releasing free ultimate guide videos on developing each muscle. We'll thoroughly explore which set of exercises for a muscle may be ideal for maxing gains, but we'll also answer the following interesting question. If you can only select one exercise per muscle group, which might be the most productive and effective? Finally, I have a free ultimate guide to bench pressing ebook that covers these areas. Feel free to get it in the link in the comments and description.